Compliance with the Open Public Meetings Law, I wish to state that on March the 18th, 2016, the notice of this meeting of the Upper Township Committee was posted on the official Township Bulletin Board mailed to the Cape May County Gazette, the Atlantic City Press, the Ocean City Sentinel Ledger, the Herald Times, and followed by the Township Clerk. Tonight's meeting is being video recorded up until the closed session portion of this meeting and will be available on UTTV Channel 97 and on the Upper Township website. We hereby direct that this announcement made a part of the minutes of this meeting. I would ask all to rise for the salute of the flag. <coughs> Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Barbara, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Barr? Here. Mr. Coggins? Here. Mr. Pearson? Here. Mr. Young? Here. Ms. Sorry. Lumbo? Here. All members are present. All right, would someone like to make uh, a motion to approve the minutes for February 29th, uh, the special <coughs> budget workshop, the March 7th regular meeting, and also the closed session minutes? So moved. Second. Is there any corrections, omissions, deletions that anyone's aware of? Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mr. <coughs> Blumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. Okay, in an effort to try and get Mr. Young out of here so we all don't get sick, let's go right to the budget and then we'll come back to the report of the governing body members. And I appreciate your patience, Hobie, so we can get through this and then you can be on your way. No problem. Okay. The, uh, the Mayor, the first thing you have is the introduction of the cap ordinance, which you can just go ahead and, and do that and pass that. That's the ordinance that says that you're going to bank any unspent um, appropriations that you have. You're not exceeding anything as the title says, but you're using the bank portion of it. So this has to be done prior to the introduction of the budget. Okay, so we are introducing this, and this, the final um, hearing will be when we have the, the budget yes. final hearing? Mm -hmm. April, April, 25th. April 25th. April 25th. April 25th. It'll be in the same order. It'll be the first thing before the adoption of the budget. Okay. Would someone like to make a, a motion to that effect to, to introduce um, the budget cap ordinance for 2016? So moved. Second. Would you call the roll? Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. And item number two on the agenda, introduction of the 2016 budget. Okay. Now this is, again, believe it or not, but this is the actual start of the process from the state's level. You've had four or five meetings and have been through this budget rather religiously <laughs> uh, the past couple of months. But in the eyes of the state, tonight starts the process. Uh, we need to introduce it, at least three out of the five say yes to go ahead and introduce it. Public hearing will be on April 25th. What this means is a vote tonight means that it's a vote to put the budget on the table and, and get the process started. It's not a vote to finish anything. Uh, on April 25th, you can change one line, you can change every line, you can change no lines. It, it's, we'll see what happens between now and April. Something may come up that you may have to do something else. You can still discuss it as time goes on, but this is the introduction and it places it um, for the formal process for public hearing on April 25th. Um, like I said, you've been through this. Uh, I've talked to Barbara after each meeting. It's been been through and through and through and through, and I think you've, you've settled on where you want to introduce it at. Uh, it is a two cent tax increase. It's within the caps, both of them. So it's legal, we can send this to the state. And, uh, and actually, you are self-exam, so um, that means that the state won't approve this budget. It'll be approved by, by Barbara as a form of uh, uh, every two out of every three years, you're self-exam, and this is one of the years that you will be. So we won't have any complications on the state end. Um, again, this starts the process on April 25th. Uh, you can conclude the process at we'll the public hearing. To make a motion to introduce the budget. Second. Would you call the roll, please? Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. The motion is carried. So that is uh, the budget now. We'll proceed. Okay, Leon. Well, thank you for your help. Yep. You're, you're welcome to stay or you're welcome to go. I'll take advantage of a, a follow-up. Get out of here. <laughs> we'll get, we'll get, and Mr. Young, uh, let the record reflect that, that he also was leaving. He's under the weather. 
and rather than put us under the weather with him, <laughs> he's uh, going to volunteer to get out of here. So, hope you feel better. See you, buddy. So, take care. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Leon. Thank you, Leon. Thank you, Leon. Thank you, Leon. I'll be cool to the send the PDF to the budget. And I'll be there. You can put it on the website. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll probably talk to him before. Think so? Yeah. Feel better. Somebody have a phone by that. Okay, so um, Barbara, do you have anything for us this evening? I just have one item. I just wanted to remind everyone that we will be closed on Friday, March 25th for the Easter, uh, the uh, Good Friday holiday. And that's all I have. So thank you. Okay. Um, trash collection will be Monday for Friday? Yes, it will. Uh, Daniel? Nothing at this time. We have a number of items for closed session. Okay. Paul? I do have a few items this evening. Thank you. Um, first, uh, the DEP uh, was participating with all the communities that were affected by uh, Superstorm Standy and uh, we provided towns with uh, seedlings for trees that were to replace trees that were possibly damaged uh, during uh, Superstorm Standy. So on Saturday, April 11th, from 12.30 to probably 2 o'clock, um, I'll be out with the green team at Amanda's Field, passing out uh, seedlings that, to any resident that wants to come and uh, pick them up. So again, that's uh, Saturday, April 8th. What type of seedlings or trees are they? It, it's a mix. Um, each resident's um, be able to get up to five seedlings, and there'll be a mix of uh, different, you know, native species of deciduous trees and evergreens. We don't know the varieties that we'll get. They ship out, you know, essentially all of the tree seedlings for Kenya County get shipped over to the landfill. Each community goes up there, and then they just got them in crates, and then they kind of put them in there, and, and you get a mix of, of different trees. But but everything's a native species. Uh, that'll you know survive and be uh, healthy down here in, in our community. No bamboo. No bamboo. Let's check. <laughs> <laughs> I can't resist that one. <laughs> what did you say that date was? Uh, Saturday, April eighth. I look at the counter. I got reading wrong. I thought you said eleventh. <coughs> you said the eleventh. That's you said the eleventh. The eleventh. That's Monday. Eighth is a Friday. You mean the ninth? Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, we're picking. I'm sorry, we're picking up the. It is the ninth. I'm, okay. I apologize. Okay. Um, April. Next, um, I'm, I'm sure everybody's seen in the news reports uh, the, the president uh, did give a uh, federal declaration for a uh, uh, storm uh, Jonas, uh, which actually declared a winter storm. Uh, spent, yeah, that kind of specifies what things are eligible. Uh, so we will be having meetings coming up to determine what public assistance that we'll be able to get reimbursement for the township. Um, I'll be participating in that as well as uh, different members from OEM. And then we'll start uh, that documentation process uh, to move forward to get reimbursed for our expenses. And that will include overtime and things of that nature? It includes some of the different preparatory uh, measures that we did in an overtime situation. Uh, and then it also covered, uh, we did a lot of storm cleanup. You know, we picked up uh, um, bulky debris in Strathmere, and then uh, throughout the community, we picked up brush, uh, you know, from down limbs and everything. So we'll be able to get reimbursement for that. We don't get reimbursed for labor during the day, but we do get reimbursed for the disposal costs and our equipment costs. But we don't get, we don't, we're not reimbursed for the uh, regular time labor. To, to clean that up. And in that declaration will afford homeowners the same opportunity, but it's a different process, right? It is a, it is a different process. Um, I'll probably, you know, the first meeting we have is more about public assistance, you know, for the local communities, um, but they would probably start, you know, providing us with some information so we can give out to the public on uh, what is available. They have given out information uh, as far as uh, small business loans, 
um, are available for commercial properties that were affected by uh, Jonas that, you know, that they can make uh, applications to the uh, Small Business Administration. Now, it's my understanding they're also going to set up, like they did after Sandy, they're going to, they're going to have uh, resource places that uh, residents can go to and speak to representatives, whether it's FEMA or something like that. So I think as soon as we get the location of where they're going to be situated, you know, we'll put that on our website and on the television. Yes. Especially for the, the Strathmore residents and those that were along, um, you know, the, in Beasley's Point and some of those that, that border, up, you know, water areas where they may have succumbed to some uh, damage, flood damage. Okay. Uh, the next item, uh, I need authorization to uh, write back to the county uh, to participate in a hazard mitigation grant program. Uh, the county is kind of getting all the communities together to, to submit one single application for hazard mitigation uh, funding to uh, try to uh, elevate or acquire uh, repetitive and superior repetitive lost properties. Uh, these are properties that have had multiple insurance claims for flood damage and uh, this, this is kind of different than previous funding where this type of funding will be not only eligible for primary residents but it also be eligible for second home uh, properties. Uh, if for severe repetitive loss property, there'll be 100% funding available to raise or to acquire the property. And if it's a just a repetitive loss property, it will be, I think, a 90% cover. So it'll be, it's a good opp grant opportunity that, you know, a lot of people that could not, you know, get the grant funding during the Superstorm Sandy uh, process because they were second, you know, the, the homes that are damage were uh, second properties, they weren't eligible. Under this program, they would be eligible. So, it, you know, but we're only looking at the severe and, and repetitive lost properties. But we need to, you know, I don't think we don't need anything formal at this point. We just need acknowledgement from the governing body that we're going to participate in that grant program. Do you need a formal motion? I just need a motion authorizing uh, the documentation we sent down to the county that we you, that you don't need a written resolution just you know, author authorization from the township committee which is essentially you know a, a motion and second authorizing to do so I it'll be in the minutes i'll move it second any further discussion call the roll mr barr yes mr coggins yes mr pearson yes mr. Jones, right here. mayor palumbo yes motion is carried with four in favor and then I just wanted to finally give you the committee an update. We're kind of, uh, Public Works is in some spring cleanup mode. Uh, we've been for the last, last probably two weeks over in Strathmere cleaning up the sand out of the, path, the pathways uh, to make them accessible uh, for the up upcoming season. And then we're starting to bring out trash cans and uh, do different uh, things like that. You know, once we're done over in Strathmere, we'll also move over to the Beasley Point Beach and the boat ramp start getting that ready for the season so we're kind of in that process to try to get you know those those areas ready for the upcoming season and before Easter. Great. Uh, that's all I had to report. Thank you. Barbara. I do have a couple things this evening. Um, first I have a request for from our uh, deputy court administrator to attend a conference the first week of June. It'll be three days. Um, held in Cape May, uh, the cost will be $250. She will not be um, spending any overnights in Cape May, she'll be commuting back and forth every day. Um, but because of the three day and the cost, um, it requires, our policy requires it come to you for approval. So I'd like to make a motion to approve that. So moved. Second. Let's call the roll. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. Thank you. And then I have one other request. Um, first of all, an announcement. Um, we're going, our tax assessor is organizing another blood drive. It will be March 31st uh, from 1 to 6, held at our community center. In years past, um, to try and entice employees to participate in the blood drive, you've offered um, a, a randomly selected employee a day off from work if they donate. Um, so the tax assessor is requesting um, that, that we be able to um, select, randomly select an employee and give them a day off if they donate blood that day. And this is something that we've done in the past, so it's not? Yes. 
So I'll make, make that motion. I move we should do that too. Second. Okay, please call the roll. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. That's it. Okay, great. Mr. Coggins? Nothing to report this evening. Beautiful. <laughs> Mr. Barr? Uh, unfortunately, Hobie had to leave uh, early, but uh, kudos to Hobie and uh, his band of volunteers that held the spring bash down at Amanda's Field. I would have to say uh, it had to have been the most organized egg hunt, to be politically correct, that I've ever seen <laughs> in my entire life. Uh, the kids are great, the parents are great. Um, what was it, 20,000 eggs? They over stuffed 20, 20, over 20,000 eggs. And uh, I would have to say the little kids were probably the quickest in uh, clear, clearing the field of all the eggs that were out there. But it was very orderly. Uh, again, thanks to all the volunteers and uh, especially also the vendors that uh, went out. And unfortunately, they had to deal with the weather at the tail end of the, of the event with some, some of the rain. But I think everybody had a good time. And... Uh, Looking forward to next year. Yeah, and I also want to acknowledge the job that Shauna did. She, you know, oh. she had organized, um, really had like every everything in place. You know, they did the uh, up to three year olds, and they did different age groups. It was very organized. Um, um, Ed and I were throwing eggs like no oh, tomorrow. <laughs> we had Twenty thousand eggs. Like where do you you don't hide them? You just throw them wherever you can, hoping that they'll find them or grab them right away, so we don't have to clean up afterwards. But it, it really was um, it was a lot of fun and I think the parents had a great time as well as the kids did so and I don't think anybody left with an empty basket so no. they all had a good no time. one was tackling anyone or anything <laughs> you know, so it was very organized and I just wanted to wish everybody a uh, safe uh, Easter season and uh, you know be safe be safe when you're out there traveling over the next couple of weeks that's all I have to report thank you mr. Pearson just uh, a few quick things uh, while you were out on the field looking for eggs, I was prepping and attending a Boy Scout or a Cub Scout event. It was a crossover for uh, eight of our young gentlemen in the township. Uh, Brendan Burns, Owen Bishop, Matthew Del Grand, Aiden, Aiden Faust, Ryan McBride, Aiden O'Kane, Mark Three, and Noah Wurzberger from PAC 79 Cub Scouts. They crossed over to Boy Scouts, so I'm recommending or moving that we should do a resolution for them at our next meeting and uh, present it to them at that meeting. That's your motion? That's a motion. That's a motion. And I'll second. Okay. Let's call the roll. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Ms. <coughs> Carey? Then the, uh, also from the same, from Troop 79, we have an Eagle Scout coming up, uh, Stephen Jefferson. He's already been uh, approved by the uh, Eagle Scout Council, or committee, I should say. And I'd also like to move that we present him with a resolution, too, at the same meeting. And then uh, I'll attend his court of honor and uh, make a second presentation there. So I'll move that. Okay. Second. Okay. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. Also, I'd like to echo on the, the uh, egg uh, event, the, uh, the egg hunt. Uh, my kids totally enjoyed it. My grandchildren, they loved it. My son was real happy. And while I was at the uh, scouting event, there was at least, uh, I want to say, four couples that mentioned to me what a great day they had for the kids. So I thought that was pretty nice. And I also want to say I hope you all have a safe, healthy, and uh, happy and uh, happy Easter here. Uh, we all need a break, so enjoy the, the religious holiday. Okay, the, the, the only thing I have to add um, is that there was a request uh, that came online um, about consideration for, well, this is a request for senior citizens, but, you know, probably for anybody that would like to do it to Trump to, uh, to look at the feasibility of doing a golf hitting cage or something like that at Amanda's Field. Um, now, we've always worked very hard over the years to to make it functionally for all ages in sports. I mean, one of the things we really worked hard on was the pass of recreation we have with the path that goes around there for cycling and walking and jogging. Um, and so I'm not sure if this is something that can be done this year 
I don't know what kind of funding we, it would take to do something like this. Um, I mean, basically, I think what you need is, is, is a net and, and probably, you know, some astroturf or something so we don't, you know, have to have any uh, problems with the fields and put a tee box in and let somebody, you know, do the thing. So it's something to consider and if it's within reason and we can certainly, you know, work it within the existing budget, which hasn't been approved yet. Um, you know, it's something that we probably should consider because this is about the third request we've gotten for this. So I'll leave that in your hands, uh, Paul, to, for consideration. Yeah, and, you can give me his contact. I can reach out to him and yep. see if he's got some ideas and we'll come up with his own price costs and okay. get back to, uh, I'll, I'll touch out with, touch base with Toby and you know, work out what costs we have available and we'll go from there. Yeah, I mean, it'd be nice if we were able to, to, to do it within reason. So. All right, with that, uh, let's go on with the resolutions. Okay, item number three. Resolution supporting the use of the Atlantic City Rescue Mission for emergency housing. Move the resolution. Second. Let's call the roll. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. Item number four, authorizing purchases to be made under state contract pursuant to NJSA 40A 11-12. Move the resolution. Second. Let's call the roll. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. Item number five, authorizing the award of a contract with Grand Turk Equipment for automotive parts and supplies. Move, Move the resolution. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. Item number six, authorizing an amendment to the shared services agreement with the Township of Dennis to provide clerical and administrative services for the construction code office. Motion to authorize. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. Item number seven, refund EMS ambulance billing overpayment to United Healthcare Insurance Company. Move the right, move. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggin? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. In favor? Item number eight, appointments to the Upper Township Green, Te Green Team Advisory Committee. Move the resolution. Second. And and Paul, are are, are most of these? Um, uh, there, it seems that there there are people that are continuing in the process, right? Yeah, I think we had one. Then yeah, I'll, I'll read the names out. Wanda Adamson, Fred Butler, Ralph Cooper, Karen Mitchell, Zachary Nickerson, Rebecca Holden, Caitlin Wentz. Yourself, Paul, as the engineer, and then Hobie Young as the township committee uh, person. Yeah, I think we've had one replacement, uh, and Rebecca Holden uh, is is the new member officially on the team, and she's actually the coordinator uh, for the uh, farmers market, and, and keeps that going. Okay. okay. Mr. Barr. Yes. Mr. Coggins. Yes. Mr. Pearson. Yes. Mayor Palumbo. Yes. Motion is carried. Four in favor. Item number nine, authorizing an amendment to the shared services agreement between the Township of Upper and the City of Corbin City for municipal court services. Move the resolution. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. Item number 10, authorizing the release of a performance bond and the acceptance of a maintenance bond from F.W. Shaw and Sons Incorporated for the NJDOT Municipal Aid Project Reconstruction of Bayview Drive from north of Sumner Avenue to north of Webster Avenue. Move the resolution. Second. Paul, everything's in place. Everything's in place. If you remember last meeting, uh, I believe it was last meeting, we authorized the final change order, so yeah, all the work has been done satisfactorily. So this starts a normal one-year maintenance bond period uh, for the work. Okay. Okay. Mr. Barr. Yes. Mr. Coggins. Yes. Mr. Pearson. Yes. Mayor Palumbo. Mm -hmm. Yes. Motion is carried. Item number eleven under ordinances: public hearing and final adoption of ordinance number four, two thousand and sixteen, an ordinance. 
revising job classifications and titles and amending chapter five entitled personnel of the code of upper township move the resolution actually we have to open it up for public yeah. comment yes so um is anybody from the public here to address um ordinance for 2016 um it's uh entitled personnel and it basically adds uh two positions maintenance worker three grounds and passport acceptance agent okay um it appears that there's no public comment so we'll close the public comment portion and now we're entertaining a motion for adoption uh motion to adopt second let's call the roll mr barr yes mr coggins yes mr pearson yes mayor palumbo yes motion is carried with four in favor item number 12 public hearing and final adoption of ordinance number five and ordinance amending ordinance number 15 2015 known as the salary ordinance for the calendar year 2016 and this is also a public hearing and um this ordinance actually addresses the the, the payment or the salary that those two positions in the last ordinance that we just passed uh, address it so would anyone like to address the township committee for ordinance 5 2016. hearing none i'll close the public portion and entertain a motion for adoption move to adopt second mr barr yes mr coggins yes mr pearson yes mayor palumbo yes motion is carried four in favor Item number 13, introduction and first reading of ordinance number seven, 2016, an ordinance authorizing the exchange of certain parcels of vacant ground within the township of Upper subject to certain terms and conditions. Move to introduce. Uh, let's set a date on that if we could with your motion. And the motion. public hearing, uh, we could have that on April 25th. Okay. That would work well. Is there a second? Second. Um, and again, this is uh, the introduction, so you'll have uh, ample opportunity to address the, the township committee over the, the period up to uh, April 25th. We'll also have a, a public hearing that day. So would you call the roll? Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mayor Plumbo? Yes. Motion is carried with four in favor. Item number 14, introduction and first reading of ordinance number 8, 2016 bond ordinance providing for various capital improvements in and by the township of upper in the county of cape may new jersey appropriating two million nine hundred and seventy thousand three hundred therefore and authorizing the issuance of two million eight twenty one seven eighty five bonds or notes of the township to finance part of the cost thereof and again if we could have the public hearing on april 25th that would also work well motion to introduce Second. Okay, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried with four in favor. Item number 15 under new business Boy Scout Troop 95 requests use of the Upper Township Community Center for the Country Shore Women's Club to hold a raffle, application number 459. And a bingo and the application number for that is 460 and that would be held on may 1st motion to approve second mr barr yes mr coggins yes mr pearson yes mayor palumbo yes motion is carried four in favor item number 16 under discussion proclaiming May 8th through the 14th, 2016, as Food Allergy Week in Upper Township. Um, I received a request from a, a CEO resident, Christina Rossich, uh, to ask for a proclamation for this. Um, currently, uh, statewide and nationwide, um, they're asking for a proclamation to make um, individuals more aware um, of food allergies. And, and interestingly enough, part of the egg hunt uh, they were candy bars that some had nuts in them and everyone was making announcements to make sure that the, if the kids had allergies to please be aware and they were going to you know sw swap you know candies or prizes that were inside so anyway this is a proclamation she had asked and I thought it was a good idea because I, I think um, 
all too often people don't realize that there are, um, especially younger, younger uh, children, um, I was about to say patients you know, playing pharmacists, but um, younger children actually have severe allergies, especially to, to, to nuts. Um, and anyway, uh, the, the proclamation reads as this, it's uh, whereas as many as 15 million Americans have food allergies with nearly 6 million being children under the age of 18. Research shows that the prevalence of food allergies is increasing among children and eight foods cause the majority of all food allergy reactions in the United States. Shellfish, fish, milk, eggs, tree nuts, peanuts, soy, and wheat. Symptoms of a food allergic reaction can include hives, intestinal issues, respiratory distress, and swelling of the throat. Accordingly to the Centers of Disease uh, Control and Prevention, food allergies results in more than 200,000 ambulatory care visits a year involving children under 18. Reactions typically occur when an individual unknowingly eats a food containing an ingredient to which they are allergic. There is no cure for food allergies and scientists do not understand why. Strict avoidance of the offending food is the only way to prevent an allergic reaction. Anaphylaxis is a severe an allergic reaction that is rapid in onset and may cause death. Food and Allergy uh, Research and Foundation Fair is a national nonprofit organization dedicated to improving the quality of life and health of individuals with food allergies and to provide them hope through the promise of new treatments. Now therefore be proclaimed by myself, uh, Mayor Upper, uh, we do proclaim the week of May 8th through the 14th, 2016 as Food Allergy Awareness Week in Upper Township and encourage the citizens of Upper Township to increase their understanding and awareness of food allergies and anaphylaxis by visiting www.foodallergiesweek.org. So um, I, I, I think we can take this as an FYI, obviously, um, that we had the proclamation. I'm not sure that we actually, it's not like a resolution or well, can we do a motion to accept it, the proclamation? Ratification maybe, a okay. motion and second. I know they asked for it prior to this, but maybe the township committee motion and second and ratify it. As the act of the township. So, would someone like to make that motion? So moved. Second. And that individual is not here, right, Barbara? Y yes, she is. Oh, well, why don't you come up? I'm sorry, forgive me. I'm reading all this. I could have presented this to you. No, come on. No, you can come up here. I'm nervous. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Let's do the official vote. So, it <laughs> so yeah. works before yeah. it was Let's do the vote. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is So I, I really did um, think this was something that was important when I when I saw the request. Um, you know, obviously I'm in healthcare and you know I see a lot of this um, happening on a day-to-day -day basis. So um, I appreciate uh, the fact that you uh, came forth and, and had the request for the proclamation. And I guess the only other thing I would ask is: Is there anything you would like to add to this? So I'm going to present you with this proclamation, but I think what we'll do is we'll make sure that a copy of this goes to the schools, yeah. um, and then you know maybe even you know some of the local physicians, just so that they're aware um, that you know that there's a, a week coming up to make people more aware, and uh, maybe we can, Paul, um, can you also put this on our internet site and yes. as, on the, the television as well? Yes. Um, so that uh, we can make people more aware. But I think it's really important that the schools are aware of it. Yeah, if, if they go to the foodallergy.org, there's um, great resources there for the schools where they can get posters and um, signs for their cafeteria, anything they need right off that website. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Come on up here. There, we're going to give you the proclamation so they <laughs> make it official. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, why don't you come up and do a picture for us? You know what? I, that'll, we'll get even more press for that. Yeah. that? <laughs> this is the proclamation. So. And that becomes a permanent record of the township. So.
Keep up the good work. Good luck with your your new kindergarten. Okay, would someone like to make a motion to pay the bills? I hereby move that all claims submitted for payment at this meeting be approved and then incorporated into the full minutes of this meeting. Second. I'm going to call the roll. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. There are two municipal reports, uh, Animal Control and Municipal Court. Uh, those two reports will be available upon request tomorrow at the Township Clerk's Office, uh, but I'll make a motion to accept those reports. Second. Call the roll. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. So we have reached the uh, public comment portion of the meeting. Would anyone like to address the Township Committee? Uh, now's the time to do it. Please state your name, your address, and the reason you would like to address the Township Committee. The audience has been very cooperative tonight. There's <laughs> not really <gone. laughs> Or maybe not. I don't so anyway, it doesn't sound like there's any public uh, comments this evening for the Township Committee. So I'll close the public portion and entertain a motion to go into executive session. So moved. I hereby move that a resolution be incorporated into the minutes authorizing the Township Committee to enter into an executive session for the following matters pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act. The matters are contract negotiation for the sale of land block 667, lot 7, beach surveys, tax map maintenance, collective bargaining agreement, and market to affordable program closing department, uh, document. Potential litigation for tax assessments, litigation for affordable housing, safety and security, and personnel. I also include in my motion the estimated time and the circumstances under which the discussion conducted in closed session can be discussed to the public as follows. It is anticipated that the matters discussed in closed session may be disclosed to the public upon the determination of the Township Committee that the public interest will no longer be served by such confidentiality. With respect to contract negotiations, such matters will be made public when negotiations have ceased and there is no longer a reason for confidentiality. With respect to litigation matters, such discussions will be made public when litigation is complete and the applicable appeal period has expired. With respect to employment and personnel matters, such discussions will be made public if and when formal action is taken or when the individuals involved consent that it can be made public. Second. Call the roll. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Pearson? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. I hope all has a all of you have a great night tonight. Um, please drive safely home.